Hey guys, on today's episode, we're going to go over the dreaded dwarf white isopods and their impacts if they invade other colonies and their actual useful purposes in your bioactive builds. So, I got a colony in front of me. We call these guys anything from devil's rice to standard dwarf whites. There's a lot of company or trade names, I guess you could say. They like to hide, which is really annoying lot because they're heavy fo heavily fossorial um little bugs or isopods i guess there's one so as you can see you basically see nothing it looks like a grain of rice um these guys aptly get called devil's rice because they if they invade your other isopod bins they will sit underneath the other isopods because they're so small taking the moisture away from the gill plates of the bigger isopods killing them off a lot of people like to think that oh well they're going to eat my isopods when they go in there no that's not the case the other isopods die of suffocation lacking that moisture getting to their gills due to these guys sitting underneath them killing them off really annoying aspect to them but it's also good only needs one one they are a parthenogenic isopod. Takes one, they're all females, not gonna do anything except reproduce, clone themselves, and cause a lot of grief. So that's the wrong things with them. On the good side, they're great for a bioactive build that you wanna keep really damp. If you wanna keep it moist and you're worried about them being too aggressive. Oh, they're gonna eat my lizards. Oh, they're dairy cows and they're gonna eat something. They're gonna go after my animals. No, they're really not. They need a lot of moisture because they don't have a hard shell like most isopods do. They're quite squishy, very malleable. So they're gonna just wanna stay in that moist substrate all the time. So not gonna affect anything. Do great dart frogs, micro geckos, things like that. The ideal situation is something like that where it's very wet and they're gonna be down on the ground a lot of the time, not being able to get picked off. And if they do get dwindled down, again, you only need one and they will reproduce themselves and start colonizing again. The bad thing about that colonization and the fossorial behavior, if we're gonna double back to that, is that by the time that you discover that one of these guys has invaded one of your multiple other bins, the problem's out of hand. I guarantee it. You're gonna have to redo that entire bin pick out all of your good isopods that you want to keep, throw out all the substrate. It's not a matter of, oh, I'm gonna pick out the dwarf whites out of my bin and try to get rid of them that way. It's not gonna work. Because if you miss one, one little dwarf white, they're going to come back and cause your headaches all over again. But again, they don't eat other isopods, not very protein aggressive, great for things like dark frogs where you want a small food item because you're worried about them munching on the soft skin of your darts, biting off some toes or something, not gonna happen. Too small, too soft, more worried about eating their poop or dying, decaying plant matter. Cool, good for that. Not really good for living in your bearded dragon setup, for instance. Not good there. Too dry, just gonna croak on you. But again, anything more damp, even like a Crescigecko substrate if you wanted to, give them a lot more moist hides, things like that, do super well in there. It's gonna give you a chance to keep your tank clean with something that's less aggressive. But their bad news bears when they get into your other colonies. So again, keep your hands clean, separate tools that get washed between, change your gloves between colonies if you need to or if you work on them. But that's it. That's our little tidbit on the devil's rice.